Hello, I'm Mitch with Compass Tools and we are going to connect the Trimble R1 GNSS receiver to an Android phone. This process will also work for an Android tablet with a supported operating system. Uh, for this demo I'm going to use the Samsung Galaxy S3 and a Trimble R1. In a minute here I'm going to ask you to put your R1 into pairing mode. Uh, that's very simple. First you just turn it on with a, a quick click of this power button and these lights will start blinking. Uh, to put the R1 into Bluetooth pairing mode you'll need to do a long hold on the power button. It's about five seconds. The red LED will stay on steady and after about five seconds of holding the button down the blue LED will start flashing. You can then let go and then you're able to pair with the R1 on your phone. I'm using a product called Moby Zen to emulate the screen of my phone. Whatever I do on my phone you'll be able to see on this recording. There we go. And the first thing we need to do is go into the settings on most Android phones it's going to look like this and we need to scroll down uh, on the newer Samsung's you have different tabs uh, we're looking for developer options this may or may not be turned on by default on your Android phone um, there's a very sophisticated technique for figuring out how to enable developer options on your phone uh, I like to pull up a Google search type in the name of my Android phone and Google will tell you how to enable developer options. Once you figure that out uh, click on developer options and in order to use the more accurate locations from the R1 receiver uh, we need to allow mock locations. So we'll just check that box and we're good there. Uh, next before we pair with the R1 uh, we might as well go to the Play Store and Trimble has a good app that's useful for the R1. It's called GNSS Status Utility. So search for that. Make sure it comes up with a app from Trimble Navigation and go ahead and install GNSS status. We'll use that in a minute. I've already got that installed so we'll close the App Store. Next thing we need to do is turn on Bluetooth. There's a couple of ways. Most Androids you can just drag from the top of your screen down and there's Bluetooth or you can go back to settings and Bluetooth should be right there. We'll go ahead and turn that on. After turning that on, I am going to do that five second hold down on the R1. The red LED is on solid and now the Bluetooth light is flashing. I'm able to pair with this R1 now. If you look on the back of the R1, uh, there's a serial number. The last four of this serial number are 2173. So if I say scan, a device called GNSS2173 will show up. I'm going to tap on it. And it's paired. So there's GNSS2173. I can get out of the Bluetooth now. From here you're using the R1 more accurate location rather than the phone's internal GPS chip. We'll fire up that app I had you installed which was called Trimble GNSS Status. Here it is. says no receivers connected and we can select a new receiver 
so long as your Bluetooth is still turned on. Um, oops, that's not the right one. 2173. And it connects really easy on an Android operating system. Uh, I am indoors, so 30 feet of accuracy is okay. Um, I'm going to go to the settings, real time config, and the default is just uncorrected. But I can tap edit, and I can turn on a real time correction like SPAS. Then I will go back to the home screen and I'll pause the recording for a second here and when we come back we should have better accuracy. The Bluetooth range on the Trimble R1 is pretty stellar. I'm able to set it outside where it can require acquire 13 satellites and also SPAS real-time corrections and I'm actually at 3 feet of accuracy. We can close GNSS status now and use the Trimble R1 in a uh, mapping app on my phone. Uh, Trimble's Terraflex is a great app to use. You can actually configure the real-time corrections uh, within Terraflex and you can skip that GNSS status step. But we'll actually close Terraflex and go for Esri's Collector app. Collector does not have a real clear way to tell you if you're getting good accuracy or not. But we can do a simple test. Uh, within Collector, when I go to mark a spot, I'll click on the plus and mark a point feature. I can go to this little settings gear and I can crank the accuracy all the way down to two meters. That's that's the highest accuracy that this version of collector will require on my phone. So I'll say OK. And because I'm connected to the R1, uh, I'm able to collect data at less than two meter accuracy. So good accuracy just acquired a new location and it's it's good collector says it's sub two meters so I'm gonna accept that point and then I'm actually gonna turn my Bluetooth off Bluetooth off so now we're not using the R1 anymore and I'm still in the same collector project I'm gonna try and mark another point but remember I required a, a two meter accuracy um, it's now using the Android's internal GPS which is just not good enough it uh, it says with the internal GPS it's not good enough so that's my indicator that the R1 will really help out apps like Esri's collector app uh, I've turned the R1 off I'm only getting 13 feet of accuracy with the internal GPS on my phone but if I were to turn my Bluetooth back on I'd be getting sub 2 meter accuracy from the R1 really it's probably sub meter accuracy on the R1 thank you for watching this short recording from Compass Tools for more information please visit compasstoolsinc.com or for technical questions please email support at compasstoolsinc.com